Okay, so my name's Yang. Um, for Hack and Tell, I built, or rather, I built a isochrome map semi recently, and then that's what I'm presenting for Hack and Tell. So, just as an overview, an isochrome map is isochrome maps is that you draw contours of equal travel time for a single point, but uh, it's it's kind of like a topological map, but instead of elevation, you are con your contours are travel time. So, I mean, something I found is like in it's kind of easier to kind of imagine it by 3D. So this is the isochrome maps projected into 3D, um, starting from Bishan. So this is for public transport. Um, folks have done it for driving before, but public transport in Singapore is particularly difficult because it's just hard to find a clean source of public transport feeds, the GTFS feed. So what you find are things like this, um, like little islands or little rich lines of, or on, on the map itself. Because it's kind of places that is faster to commute to or more accessible. So these are essentially your these are essentially your train stations, right? So I mean, a couple of other patterns that we have here. I mean, this is this is taken from Chachuka or Bukit Panjang, Bukit Panjang, and the equivalent three D version of it. So Singapore is particularly peculiar in this case, but we don't really have any natural barriers except for that thing in the middle, which is the central water catchment area. Like, the rest of Singapore is completely fine except for this thing. Um, which kind of makes sense. I mean, okay, yeah, I, I, I won't go into that one. So one of the boys in the office actually lives in this place called Flora Drive. So, for Boston. Um, so, yeah, and... So, not just... You, you, don't, you don't get islands just by... Uh, just through MRT stations. You also get islands. These are actually buses that travel down the expressway. So these are actually there. This is Salida Camp. This is somewhere else. Um, yeah, there are actually buses that kind of just run through this expressway here. Yeah. So and then on Reddit there was these guys that were looking at Sungai Gedong Camp. So Sungai Gedong Camp. It's awesome. It's like no man's land. So okay. Um, generally speaking, if the gradient is steeper, the travel time is um, your speed is slower. If the gradient is it's 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 gentler, your travel time is actually faster. It's kind of counterintuitive, but that's not what I suppose. It's, it's just an analogy in this case. So the thing I like about isochrome maps is that um, it, it leads to other things. So it leads to things like this one, which is, oh, uh, where are we? Here we go. Uh, yeah. So based on that, like just, just, when, just when this, uh, just when af shortly after I made the isochrome maps, um, the new TWAS line actually, the new TWAS line extension actually came up. So this is before the extension. So this is how the maps look like before the extension starting from Jurong East. So mainly this area here. Um, this is how it looks like after the extension. So this area here. Right. Um, I mean, particularly this kind, this representation not particularly great. It's kind of like spot the difference. So what I did is actually just calculate the deltas. Uh, mouse. Um, so these are the four stations that are included in the extension. And the brighter the colors, the more time savings up to 25 minutes. So namely around these two stations, if I'm right, is um, Tuas West and Tuas Crescent or something like that. Um, they have it here, actually. So it kind of makes sense. Like If you look at LTA's uh, reported time savings, it makes sense why they report only around Tuas West or Tuas Crescent, because that's where the most time savings is at. Um, if you look at Gao Circle, and Tuas Link is not as impressive a time saving as the other two. Right? So there's one toy. So um, I, found, I found this other guy's um, analysis on accessibility in general in Singapore. I'm sorry, not Singapore, in, in general, and it's you compare jobs that are accessible from a point within, say, X number of minutes, 35, 45, whatever. Um, I chatted with a friend from URA, and the best data set for that is CPF, but that's classified. So instead of using, instead of using jobs as a measure of accessibility, I made this toy version which measures um, your accessibility to the nearest, um, your, the Hawker Center Accessibility Index. So within 45 minutes, how many orca centers in Singapore can you get to? So it kind of is very not really, because up here there's actually a lot of jobs in industrial manufacturing, up down here there's a lot of jobs in manufacturing, but it gives you a sense of like accessibility in general. 
That's it. Okay. Yeah. Now we have five minutes for questions. Um, I yeah. see a lot of, of APIs from LTA yeah. for, for traffic uh, feeds, yeah. uh, but you said it's all dirty. Can you elaborate? Okay, um, so to build the isochronic maps, what I did, what you need beforehand is um, you need this thing called the GTFS, uh, General General Transit Feed Specification um, Data Set, which which compiles the public transport, which essentially is what uh, LTA would give to um, Google for them to do their their, their transport routing. Um, that was back in the day. Now they have uh, they have real time data as well. Um, from my understanding, LTA gives it to them in some XML format that is magical, and then Google actually translates it across to GTFS themselves. So, so I've been hunting for this data set for like four years, five years now, like since I've been back. Um, and it is correct that it's actually Google's intellectual property because they did the conversion. Um, so from the data set, from, from what is released from LTA, they have the schedules for buses but not for trains. So for trains, I actually had to scrape the various websites. I mean, consolidate manually the various websites. Um, yeah, and then all that is part, yeah. So there is, uh, that, I mean, it would be interesting to actually, the more accurate way of dealing with this is actually reverse engineer the bus arrival and train arrival APIs and then use that to can calculate the travel times. But, but you're working backwards for that one. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Question. So, is there a way to visualize that in such a way that it's intuitively like, okay? So in this one, right, you start at the top and you go down yep. on the mountain side. Yep, yep. But you know, intuitively, the further you are, the harder it is to get there. Yep. It seems like there's some kind of inversion that would need to be done. I think. I think the problem is with the analogy. I, maybe it's my problem with my analogy, if I use um, the analogy of um, equating it to topological maps. Yeah. Super easy to yeah. go downwards. You want yeah. to go upwards. Yeah. I think I think is is a problem with the analogy, not particularly with the representation, because I I've thought of this particular representation for. I mean, okay. Um, I take it back. There is there are the guys over at MIT. Um, uh, sensible cities that have done it before. Um, what they did is that instead of drawing it in contours, they deformed the space. They, they respect time, they deform space. Um, problematic parts about that is that um, when you do, they did it with um, driving data, driving and bike data, which is somewhat continuous in terms of the contours. But if you do with, if you do with um, public transport, you have islands. And it's kind of harder to map that back into this kind of distortion. And it's also not that particularly, it's, my take on it is this one is actually more for planning use or more for, for um, I wanted to use it more for analysis rather than for, I find that that one's a lot prettier. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, how do you draw this process by estimating the bus and train development? Okay, so, uh, okay, I lost it. Um, so what you actually do is that for every, you, you cut Singapore up into many grids. Uh, you cut Singapore up into a, what I did is a 200 by 200 meter grid. Um, every point pings every other point. So every point you get to every other point in Singapore uh, and you get a travel time from that. So you get kind of this grid and hit heat map of Singapore. Um, uh, point, point to many points kind of travel time matrix. And then from the heat map you you essentially draw, you essentially draw, I mean, turf.js and D3 as two, you do marching squares. Essentially, you do marching squares and you interpolate between, between points. So that's how I get the contours. Yeah. So, yeah. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay, I have one more question. What's the thing that actually generates the map? Um, okay, there's a... Which part of the map? Okay, the thing that actually generates the... Okay, so this is my pipeline. So from, from digging and scraping from GTF, uh, digging and scraping GTFS, I pipe it into OpenTrip Planner, which does, the, which does the which does the point to point analysis, and then I take the data out and I have a I have an offline script to draw the contours, because what comes out of what comes out of uh, OpenTrip Planner essentially is just a heat map. 
Yeah, and then if I really want the contours, and the reason why I need the contours or why I want the contours is because um, when they live as proper polygons, you can then perform um, geospatial analysis on it. Like, what's this? Um, now, you know, Code actually has this feature. It's just really far, it's hidden really far inside their, their, their interface. You can actually pick a couple of places, set a travel time, and then it will filter, it will filter for the intersection spatially. So that's why I had to move one step further to actually draw the contours because I wanted the polygons. Right. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Thanks. Cool. Thank you.